Number one, as we've already looked, tongues are not unique to Christianity. They're not unique to Christianity. So the fact that pagans can speak in tongues and do it just as convincingly as any professing charismatic Christian is proof positive that just because someone is speaking in tongues is not necessarily an indication that that person is getting that ability from God. Pagans do it too. So not at all an indication of God's hand on that person. Tongues can be practiced in an ignorant, ungodly way. This was what was going on in the church in Corinth. Church in Corinth was an absolute mess, and they had this, this rampant abuse of the spiritual gifts. They were abusing the, the gifts in every imaginable way, in an un, unimaginable immorality going on in that church, and Paul was writing to correct this. Paul was writing to correct this. But tongues can be practiced in an ungodly way, can be done in such a way that it brings attention to the person speaking in tongues rather than glorifying Christ, rather than edifying the church. That's what was going on at the church in Corinth. Also, if in, done in public, in corporate worship, an interpreter must always be present and he must always interpret. And so if you're in a church and there's a group of people speaking in tongues all at once and no one is interpreting, that's well outside of biblical parameters. That's not of God. Paul says that it must be done by two or at the most three, each in turn, and one must always interpret. And if that's not what's going on, then that is outside of biblical parameters. It is not of God. And of course, we argue that that gift has ceased anyway, no longer in operation. Also, it is false that all believers should speak in tongues. Some churches teach that if you are saved, your salvation will be evidenced by you speaking in tongues. And if you don't speak in tongues, well, then you must not be saved. But that is patently unbiblical. The Apostle Paul asks a series of rhetorical questions. He says, all are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not teach, do they? All do not speak in tongues, do they? And clearly, the implied answer to these rhetorical questions is no. No, they don't. We can no more say that every Christian should speak in tongues than we could say that every Christian should have the gift of teaching or every Christian should have the gift of mercy. Every Christian does not have every spiritual gift. The Holy Spirit distributes the gifts among the body as he wills to do so, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So this is patently unbiblical. And also, tongues were for a sign of judgment. Tongues were for a sign of judgment. This is something that I think the vast, vast majority of people miss. Tongues were for a sign of judgment. There's only one place in the New Testament that gives us an actual reason, a function for the gift of tongues, and that's in 1 Corinthians 14, 20 through 22. The Apostle Paul says, tongues were for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. Now, what did Paul mean by that? Was, was Paul indicating that when a lost person sees you speaking in tongues, they will be so impressed by that ability that they will just have to come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord? Not at all. Not at all. And we know that because right here, Paul directly quotes Isaiah chapter 28. Well, what's going on in Isaiah chapter 28? Judgment. Judgment. One of the signs that God was bringing judgment on his people is that one day the Jews, the Hebrews, would look up and in their midst, would be a group of people speaking a foreign language. Not unintelligible gibberish, but a foreign language, Babylonian, Assyrian, what have you. And when they saw that, that was a sign that, uh-oh, God's about to bring the hammer down. God's bringing judgment. And this is what Paul quotes when he gives us a reason, a function for the gift of tongues. And that's what was happening in the book of Acts. Acts chapter two, when the Holy Spirit fell, the day of Pentecost, and these men began to speak in foreign languages, that was a sign that God was bringing judgment on unbelieving Israel because Israel had rejected Jesus as their Messiah. They crucified him. And so as a sign of judgment, God was showing that when these men began to speak in other languages, that was God's indication, his sign, that his salvific gaze, if you will, his gaze of salvation was shifting away from the Jews to the Gentiles. And even to this day, Israel remains under the judgment of God. Not in a militaristic sense, not in a political sense. I'm not saying we should not support Israel. We absolutely should. But in a salvific sense, 
To this day, God is doing the vast majority of his saving work, not among Jews, among Gentiles.